Hi, and welcome to back to Tales from the Infrared. After some technical difficulties with Google Hangouts, yes, Google Hangouts, you suck, I was finally able to get this back up and running, and we're back. We're here to have some fun. And Mercedes Carrera is not feeling well, so she will be a little bit late. And if you'll give me a second, I need to... Get her a pregnancy that. test? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I, she somehow might I be. doubt that. I think with all of the stuff that she does in her job, that's probably the last thing she wants to worry about right now. Well, no, I, I, all I saw was a tweet. She wasn't feeling better. I, tw I messaged her. She says she's not, she's not feeling all that that well. She'll, she'll jump in later. When she does, we're gonna jump on to the main topic of South by Southwest. Because that's 90% of, well, eh, it's part of why she's here anyway, because we love her and she's awesome. And then the topic as well. So for right now, uh. we'll, yes, but as as you've heard, we have Nefanor joining us. We do? Where? Where is that bastard? He owes me 10 bucks. Yeah, I still need to shoot that fucker. Yeah, I never find him. Yeah, I know. Well, actually, I'm old, old depressio. <laughs> no. 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 When, when you speak, for some reason, I keep, I keep losing you. I don't hear everything you say. Yeah, you are cutting out, Rachel. Fuck. Son of a bitch. Yes? Okay. Well, as you can hear, we have Rachel Edwards. Sort of. Sort of. Rachel Edwards, where? Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's we have... We, yeah, that's... You can only really do that joke once, maybe twice. Not all three times the charm. I know. Yeah, not so much. I know, but I as know. You, as you heard, we also uh... have... Mike from Red Pill Gamers. Howdy, guys. And I swear to God, dog, get the fuck out of here. You come in at the right times as usual. <laughs> oh, no. Well, we get to hear some uh, animal abuse on the air. Anyone want a pair well, of slippers? <laughs> I was going to say, as long as nobody's choking the chicken, <laughs> I think we should be okay. No, we're saving that for uh, our guest. Uh, some of you are saving that for the guest. I, I know... But I am not. So who wants to sit there and go through the show notes? How about someone who is able to download them, which isn't me? Does that mean I... It's, what the fuck? Hello? Can okay, you hear me? today's show notes. The internet ruined my life for Brianna Wu. The famous cry bully, you son of a bitch dog. Just right here. Brianna Wu is with me. <laughs> herself involved in the footsteps of Sweetie Park. Her perpetual victim has uh, gone out of a way to get a semi but altogether crappy mainstream television show to listen to her bullshit. Never mind. <laughs> that, that The reason she had the problem is that she could incessantly attack gamer could say completely uh, falsifiable things as fact and then call on this type of behavior she would call and cry harassment. Hey, Brianna Wu, how's that Patreon going lately? Owning ten or more games on Steam, you are too core for many developers. Fuck you, you little shits. It seems I, I am suffering from deja vu. Please no deja vu jokes, Neff. <laughs> this is very similar to the exact same articles that started the whole fucking bullshit Gamergate thing almost two years ago. Only now, it's from game developer... Uh, D D Daniel Cook, with a panel of other developers pretty much pushing the same bullshit line that the vast majority of, of gamers don't matter. It seems that the, that now even game developers from San Francisco... Ah, God damn it, talk quick. Look at me. San, San Francisco buy into the SJW narrative. Good luck on keeping your companies running. We sure won't be buying them from you. Ah, Superman actor Cavill speaks out about calling double standards. Better watch out there, Henry. Feminists don't like being called on their hypos. God damn it. I mean, hypocrites. 
It's great in all that you uh, talk about this uh, particular faux pas, but I bet the feminists will be calling your studio and trying to get you fired real quick. Let's time that harassment. Three, two, one, nothing? Ooh, good. And Microsoft wants you to train AI with Minecraft. No, Rachel, you're not building that shit. No living ma uh, boyfriend for you. No robotic boyfriend. Skynet! Skynet! Wait, wrong movie. But it evidentially meant Minecraft is trying to train artificial intelligence by using players playing Minecraft. Their goal is to get the AI to the point that they can collaborate with human beings, support them in a creative manner. Sounds more like her than Terminator at this point, but you'll never know. You can never tell. Hopefully, we'll have Mercedes on for this. Free speech activist Mercedes Carrera removed from South by Southwest panel after refusing to censor herself. Honey, don't stop. Our awesome special guest is here to help explain all this and give her side of the story. We will let her explain it all and save you the snark for afterwards, maybe. And it's time for some J.K. Rowling shit. And let and pretty much it's time to let have J.K. Rowling let other people write Harry Potter books. I know this is an opinion piece, and 100% aware that this is someone's idea of a positive a positive step for Harry Potter. And on some level, I agree with the uh, prospect of Her uh, Rowling letting other people take a crack at the Hogwarts universe. Having this, having said this, it is time for her to do it. Or is it possible that she has some ideas that she wants to get out there before she gives up, uh, give others a shot? Or heaven forbid, she just wants to le uh, let it alone and let people use their imagination. And Harry Potter and the Cursed Child's Part 1 and Part 2, Book 8, about the world's favorite wizards. Speaking of someone else writing Harry Potter books, it looks like the player that uh, play that is in development is being written into a novel. This was worked on by J.K. Rowling and John Tiffany and jo Jack Thorne. While it might be actually pretty good, there are going to be two versions of this now. The first one that will be re uh, released with the original script for the play the, that everyone started rehearsing, which will be released on July 31st. The second and final version, titled The Definitive Collector's Edition of Harry Potter 8, will be re released later. PlayStation Virtual Reality, three, uh, $399, coming in October. And it looks pretty good to us. PlayStation has its own VR for PS4. CNET seems to think it's a really good addition to the PS4, and with about 50 games for this piece of technology, it might be worth uh, a total amount of 1000 for everything, or not. And lastly, Nintendo's first mobile game, Mimoto, has a $79 microtransaction. Microtransactions is the wave of the future for gaming, especially for the fact that, well, most gamers don't have to pay for every little fucking thing in the game. In fact, I would venture to say that most gamers would rather have a complete game at launch than small products of games that they have to continually pay for over and over and over and over again. I wonder how soon it will be before developers like that this fall into bankruptcy. All this and some fun surprises on Tales from the Infrared. And speaking of a fun surprise, we now have a new Usagi. Ohio. A wild Usagi has appeared. Ah, uh, yes. Just returned from the uh, underworld. The underworld? The wild Usagi uses Wake Up. It's not very effective. Apparently not. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so with the exception of South by Southwest uh, censoring Mercedes, who says she'll be here somewhere later because she's not feeling well, Who wants to start where? I am, I am, I am more than willing to start on a couple of topics right now. But I, I'm gonna let the panel decide. I say we start talking about Minecraft because uh, it, this uh, new AI may actually be better than uh, letting Rachel help us. I mean, it'll probably be less bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Oh, that's that's harsh. But you know, I, I I was reading through it, and you know, we we were making I, I I kind of when I wrote the show notes, I kind of mixed metaphor mixed uh, references. You know, it's, it's supposed to be Skynet, Skynet. You know, kind of like Khan. But anyway. I, I still like oh oh, I still like the idea that uh, uh, Christian was talking about. Uh, he was saying that it could be them trying to create Herobrine, 
which is an old legend from uh, Minecraft where there's a an AI in the game that's smart enough to actually understand how to build and do stuff, but is opposed to you. And that would be cool. Oh, that! I, where did this this legend come from? I'm not sure. I think it was. It's kind of like a a copy or a creepy pasta that somebody had put out there saying, "Oh, they saw someone that looked like a player, but he was all dark and all that kind of thing." Sort of a slender oh, man. Concept. Is that the one with the light eyes? Yeah, exactly. Uh, they saw him out there in the while they were out mining, and they weren't sure, but some of their stuff was missing. And after that, and that was the story, and everyone just started. Uh, making it more, uh, making the story bigger, and so they called him Hero Brian and went on from there. Oh, uh, so basically, someone started started something, and it just took on a life of its own, and very soon might be part of the game. I hope so. I could see that. I could actually see that being an interesting addiction addition to the game, having an actual AI that builds things that. Screws with you. That would be fun. Well, that would also replace Rachel very well. Yeah, but when it comes to fucking with people, I think we do better with uh, fucking with you than anyone. Yeah, go ahead. Tell them, tell them what you guys did. We turned a sky palace into a waterfall. You did what? Yeah, he, he was starting to build a sky palace, so we covered his entire, uh, basically the base of it with uh, water, and it just flowed all down. It was this big, giant waterfall coming from the sky. Yeah, It's the most no, beautiful the, thing ever. Uh, okay, so the, sto the story goes. The on I, I was sitting there, I was trying to build... A sky palace, and I told I told all all the guys I play with I was playing with that this thing would be unprankable when I was done. Well, you didn't add the when done part. Yeah, well, I I forgot to add that when it's done, it'll be unprankable. You're not going to be able to mess with this thing. Uh, they did the Return of the Jedi trick on you. They did it before the station was fully operational. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many hours did it take to do that one? <laughs> uh, to mess with it? Not long. Yeah, not not long. It didn't take long. But I, w I had already put like 24 hours into this thing at that point. Just building it. I wasn't even done with the first fucking floor. This thing was supposed to be m a massive fucking castle in the sky. You shouldn't have been able to mess with it at all. When done. When done. Yeah, but you're realizing that most of us figured uh, could have figured it out anyway. We're used to dealing with ocean temples, which are really messed up. Yeah, well, the thing with it was, was I was planning on, basically, if you pranked it, you killed yourself. Yeah, we can that do that. Did, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> we don't care. No, well. All right, so we have a Rachel back. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you quite well. You just missed the story of all the fun we had pranking Jim's base. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a great story. Well, the, actually, the funny part is there's more to the story than just the end result there. Uh, first, Jim builds a base, and somebody goes in and replaces all of the stuff with pink wool, so it's mm -hmm. a pink base. Uh, after he fixes that, uh, they put a giant sign above it that says Jim's Gay Bar, but he decides to set fire to that, and it only burns hey, the bar so, down, so, so it ends up saying Jim's Gay. <laughs> Uh, then they, uh, then he tries to burn it again, and we get rid of Jim, and it just says "gay" above his house. <laughs> then he starts yes. building the sky castle. Yes, this this is what I get f with my friends, people. This is this this is the type of people I wow. hang out with. These are the people I call friends. I'm just disappointed that I had recorded it, and it was on the old computer, and my old computer died. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and I am about ready to dive into this world. <laughs> uh, sorry, Usagi. You're up for some hell. Yes. But I, I will say this, you know, Minecraft is a lot of fun if you're autistic. I, I'm raising well, my hand you. right here. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> you, you know we love you, Rachel. All of us are artistic. Okay. Even our special guest coming oh. in. Well, no. It's, the jury's well, still out on, on some of us. And Rachel completely denies it. Yeah, yeah well, she Which also denies the first stage. There's Link, she also denies anal, so we know that's false. She denies her love for Penina, too. Uh, All right. Okay, let's, let's move that on way. to the... Let's, let's move on to the next... Uh, you guys are just jealous of what me and Penina had. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to touch the woo? Okay. I, I I am not touching this. I, let's touch the woo. Oh God! I can't oh, believe why do you want to touch the woo? Oh, I cannot why believe I just said that. that. Okay, so here's here's the situation. Siffy decided to start a new show called "The Internet Ruined My Life," and. They've had a couple of episodes. One with Suey Park, who started the hashtag Cancel Colbert and ended up coming off as a complete cunt. All the way around. Which she is. That's not that hard yeah. to pull off with someone like that. Truth yeah, hurts. Yeah, that's not that hard. Yeah, it, it really Which does. Is also but apparently... Like yeah, but... Hold on. But apparently... You know, the, this this seems to happen a lot because the internet is ruining people's lives. The problem with it is, is first off, they're starting from the wrong premise in that the person ruining their life is the person in the mirror. Yeah. So and it requires self-awareness. Not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> with uh, this Woo episode, from what little I've seen... And I've, I've seen a small portion of it so far. Wu even says, you know, I went online and I started going after Gamergate and, and posting shit in Gamergate and attacking... The, and she doesn't outright say she was attacking Gamergate, but she was sitting there... It showed some of the things she posted and, you know... Every, everything is Gamergate now. It's all Gamergate. It's Gamergate. The problem with it is, is even in the some of the things she got, the harassment she got, I'm not saying she hasn't been harassed. He, it, whatever. I don't care. I, I'm going to go with it. Yes, it's it's trans. I don't care. Um, it's something, that's for damn sure. Yeah, it, it or it's woo. Or Either way, I, I'll either call it Wu or It. Wu, um, s some of the t tweets Wu gets back have nothing to do with Gamergate. And the ones that do were an actual prank, a badly done prank, that um, was proven to be false. But throughout this whole thing... Wu says it's Gamergate. Though I will say, you know, the actress they got to to reenact things for her looks a lot like uh, um, Stanakotic from Castle. The thing I find the funniest is that she's sitting here crying harassment, harassment. When a she started the whole thing, she put her, she basically ran in front of the Gamergate bus and complained when it hit her. Then. The whole situation is that uh, she even faked some of the harassment against herself. We've got actual archived proof of her doing that, where she posted a uh, thread on her Revolution 60 Steam uh, game thing saying, Is Brianna Wu, feminist developer, head developer at Giant Space Cat, a horrible person? But she forgot to log out of her own account, so it was posted by herself. Yeah, so... But th this is the thing is, 
in this case, we can definitively prove the internet did not ruin Brianna's life. She did. Or it did. And that's probably what pissed so many people off who even spend a half a second looking at this shit. It's like, so you act like a dick to people and they tell you to piss off and they smack back. Big surprise! Yeah. Also, I saw... What little I saw of that particular thing, uh, I think Feminism is for Nobody, uh, Fiffin, posted like a, a small snippet of it where Brianna Wu was basically complaining that the police basically told her just to, to to turn off her devices and to not go on the internet for a while. And she found, she thought that that was just... Oh my god! Common sense! <laughs> that wasn't sense. helpful. You mean... Like, I know, well, they basically told her that she was like... Uh, yeah. yeah, they told her, like, just get off the internet for the for a while. Like, she's there wanting a police, uh, wanting to, the police who have, you know, things, more important things to worry about to stop they and, have and, better and deal with the do. stupid problem that she could do. Yeah. Then to, like, deal with some stupid internet drama that could be solved by her just getting off of Twitter for a little while. Uh, I'm going to take the quote of a great man. Uh, the quote is, ha, 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 how the fuck is cyberbullying real? Ha, 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 nigga, just walk away from the screen like, nigga, close your eyes. Ha, ha, Tyler, the creator. You realize that you, if you are going to post something on something that's considered an international, worldwide forum... You are going to get blowback from people who just don't like you, or just don't agree with your opinion, or realize you're flat out wrong. Yes, and that's the whole thing with this, is she was posting an opinion. And literally, Twitter is nothing more than an international forum. Whether we want to uh, look at it this way or not, that is exactly what it has become. Same thing with Facebook. Whatever... Social media is nothing more than an international forum because everybody can see it. You cannot unpost, you cannot unsee. Right. The internet is vast and infinite. <clears throat> the problem with it is, is these people are used to, I guess, dealing with people who forget things real quick. The internet <laughs> never forgets. Oh, no. God, no. Yeah. The internet is kind of like anonymous. They never forgive, they never forget, and it's legion. Nah, uh, it's vast and infinite. I always like the idea of Masato Katsuragi. Vast, infinite, and full of darkness. Well, I'm not even going to go with full of darkness. I'm just going to put it as the most obvious thing. is It's vast, it's infinite, and it once it's out there it can be brought up again and again. This is the world we live in now. It's, it's like it, it, it's everything you do is now coded. Biting you in the course. ass. What? Bite you in the ass. <laughs> yeah, it can bite you in the ass. That's the world we live in. So if you're gonna go out there and do stupid shit, you know, I, I have this, I, I have this philosophy in my life, which is. I'm not going to do anything that I don't want to see on YouTube tomorrow. Oh, God, no. But we yeah. have seen a lot of what you do on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but well, at least he, at least he is... Conjured. What did I say? I said I don't do anything I don't want to see on YouTube tomorrow. That is that is a good way to go about that this sort of thing, but I think a lot of people don't see it that way because... Social media has become really, really popular from when some of us have been, you know, younger or on the internet, things like that. It's it's gotten so big that it provides so many problems, and people will do things like post their nudes privately on Facebook or something like that, and they'll think like, oh, you know, no one's gonna, no one's gonna, you know. Uh, Sorry, no I'm one's going to see it because no one's going to it privately. Yeah, no one's going to see it. Yeah, no one's going to repost it. Nobody's going to save it or anything like that. And 
yeah, it provides so many problems. Every major problem that, that comes that people are complaining about all goes back to social media. Well, not all of it, because I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of shift a little though. bit. I'm gonna shift a little bit and go to the fappening. I, I hate to say it, don't don't post shit on social media. Don't fucking save shit on the cloud or anything like that, because no no system is completely secure unless it's completely cut off from the the internet. Yeah. And if it's on the cloud, it's not gonna be that. It's less secure. Because you have th hundreds of thousands of people accessing that system. The more people, um, hmm. the more people that can access the system, the less secure it really is. So if you've got nudes, yeah, and you don't want people to see it, <laughs> yeah. Well, here's here's another thing, and it's something that. Uh, my father once told me that, and it strikes true for me, and I, I, I got to share this. The ability to keep a secret is inversely proportional to the number of people that, that uh, know it. The same thing with Internet systems. The ability to keep it, uh, keep it secure is inversely proportional to the number of people that have access to it. Yes. Well... And okay. as everyone has access oh. to Apple Cloud, wow. Well, the reason I, I bring it back to social media, though, is the fact that with social media, it brought on a lot of people who tip the internet all, all that much, just kind of flooding in and using it as just an all-purpose place of just to not just to not just to get news or to send an email or something like that but also to do all manner of social things and they just kind of don't really think about it being there forever especially since a lot of the people using it are really really young they're, they're in their teens and things like that so don't think about how it's gonna come back to them later on it will come back and bite you in the ass. It always does. And those of us who are aware of this will be around laughing at you, as will your peers. <laughs> so, hey, Neff, you brought something up a little yeah. bit earlier in our little side chat, that our little group chat. Please tell me, what is so new and exciting? <sighs> Breaking news! Gawker going down in flames thanks to Hulkamania, who now owned them. Yes, this is right. <laughs> After the court case, Hulkamania has run rampant throughout Gawker and has taken $115 million before punitive damages have been assessed. This means the wrestler has grand slammed the giant and taken it down for the count. Well, that was an interesting <laughs> way of saying it. But yes, Gawker Media. And once again, the <laughs> yes, Gawker <laughs> Media has been uh, ha has gotten the giant leg drop of doom. The chair between the t ears. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah! Even Randy Savage says <laughs> you better slap it to him. <laughs> Oh boy, time. Okay, we're resurrecting past heroes here. Come on. <laughs> okay, we are. We are Kill making me. a lot of. Do the ultimate warrior then, if you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing. What a you lot gonna of... do, Gawker? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're bringing up a lot of WWE references from old school days. Uh, I but yes, oh, this... the Gawker burning. <laughs> Yes, this is actually something people have known known about for a while, that Gawker and Hulk Hogan have been in a legal battle. It's actually extremely amusing that this is this has gone down the way it has, at least to those of us who hate Gawker. Don't just hate Gawker; we despise them. Burn, baby, burn! Flames are getting higher. Sticky bomb, meet Mr. Stupid! 
burn by uh, But yes. I do want to I do want to point something out. Gawker is going to try an appeal. I know they have to put up a uh, portion of the money up front in order to appeal, but still, they're going to try an appeal. If they appeal, if they appeal, any um, oh god, what's the word I'm looking for? Any um, precedent that is set is on hold until the end of the appeal. And most likely, the appeal process will not be covered, which means they that could easily be reversed. So I'm not going to count the chickens before they're hatched yet, but I will say we need to to continue to keep aware of this and keep this in our uh, in our uh, eyesight. Click of minds. Okay. Yeah, keep this in our minds somewhere so that when the appeal process happens, we can continue to sit there and flood shit at these people and say, look, this is what Gawker did. They're trying to weasel out of it. Don't let them do it. Because honestly, at some point, I'm actually kind of torn on this. One, yes, what Gawker did was wrong because Hulk Hogan went about and asked them, hey, take it down. They said no. Kind of a dick move. But at the same time, if you look at it from the from the perspective of freedom of speech, but also at the uh, what I was saying about not doing anything you don't want to see on YouTube tomorrow. It it is kind of a blow for that, because yes, technically, as a media outlet, whether we want to acknowledge them as the, such or not, they do have protection of the media. They have the right to publish what they, they want to publish. At the same time, I think, you know, they sh should be allowed to publish it. But when when Hogan said, you know, take this down, take down the sex tape, they should have still, they should have been able to keep the story up, but at the same time take down the actual tape. That's well, from a legal standpoint, technically, the tape is the property of his and the, uh, the woman in it because of the fact that uh, he is in it. And uh, because of that, uh, it should have not been a problem for them to take it down because, in truth, that would have been a DMCA claim. Which is true. I don't... That's, that's not my issue with it. I'm looking at it from all perspectives and saying, okay, they should have been able to run with the story, but yes, that is a DMCA claim. They didn't have the rights to that, uh, to the sex tape. That should that part should have been taken down. But, but you know, doctor can't resist shitting on men. After all, they are uh, have Jezebel under their wing. Well, I'm not even going to get started on that. But I, I'm trying to look at it. Whether we want to admit it or not, Gawker is still a news source. Granted, an extremely shitty news source on the level of Weekly World News. Uh, actually, lower. According to... Uh, uh, God, what is that, that news aggregating site? Uh, the one that does feeds for everybody? I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what it is, but uh, there's a ranking system that they have that descri uh, describes where specific media outlets are, and if they don't reach a certain point, uh, a point value on their system, they don't... Oh, uh, Associated Press. Right. If they don't reach a certain points level, which is, I believe, 40 points, they don't make it. Most gaming websites are well below that. Yeah, I, Gawker's even lower. Well, I'm <laughs> I'm aware of that, but and Weekly let's look World at, News is higher than them. Yes, but let's also look at Weekly World News, who po who posts things like, uh, "I had Elvis's baby long after he was been dead." Yes, that's patently false. 
whereas Gawker does patently false and morally wrong. The trouble is that the press has no ethics about them anymore. Uh-huh. Well, I, I could argue ethics? that... What are those? I was going to say, I could argue that uh, the press doesn't have any ethics. That includes uh, even CNN, MSNBC, and other sites. If you want to argue ethics... Um, Join Gamergate. Well, I'm not even going to go with Join Gamergate, though. I do fully support them. I will point out that if you look in the last 20 years, how many sites, how many news outlets really have demonstrated any kind of ethical behavior consistently? There you go. I just listed them for you. Yeah. And that's the problem is we want, we would love to have ethical behavior in everything. That's going to start a completely different topic, and I, I maybe some sometime I will uh, do a stream and people can join in, give give their thoughts on uh, on ethics and where we need to start from. But anyway, let's. I, I think we've uh, annihilated this topic as badly as Hulk annihilated Gawker. Oh yeah. What you gonna do, Gawker? What you gonna do? Bend over and make it hurt. <laughs> okay, so who wants to who wants to bring us into another a new, another topic? Okay, let's see if we trigger Rachel. It's time to let J.K. Rowling let other people write Harry Potter. <laughs> well, that triggers me right there. No, it triggers Rachel because that means she might actually have a shot at getting her uh, fan fictions out there. Oh. Yes. Okay, we're not talking tentacles. about we're not talking about tentacle rape, Harry Potter fan fiction. All right. Oh, Rachel's run off to go submit her uh, uh, resume. <laughs> okay, th- this article is, was actually a fairly interesting read, and. While yes, this person is does have a social justice bent. You can you can see it from the examples that they bring up. They do also bring up a good point. There's there's nothing wrong with, you know, giving other people a chance at that uh, that genre, or a tangentially. If you look at it, Star War. Uh, George Lucas did the same thing with Star Wars, and if it wasn't for that, I don't think Star Wars would be anywhere near as big as it is. But there's a thing with that. Lucas signed off on everything. Well, he Lucas signed, signed off, off on. on Lucas signed, signed off. off on just about everything on that anyway. Yeah, I mean, he signed off on the role playing games. He signed off on all the novels. The, anything that had Star Wars in it had to go past his desk first. So he could well, actually not have necessarily a, his desk. He had uh, other people doing it for him to keep some continuity. Right. Now the question is, will they allow Rowling that same thing? Well, regardless of whether they do or not, I, I, my issue, I, I'm looking at it from the perspective of this person saying, "Okay, it's time that you do this." I. I'm like, no. She has every right to hang on to it for as long as she wants. She has every right to do whatever she wants to with her intellectual property. Um, I, I don't see an issue with it if she wants to do that. But sitting there, my my biggest thing is sitting there and saying, it's time to do this. It's like, fuck you. It's a, she's demanding to play in the world. It's uh-huh. not like Devin Niven that gave you an open invite into the ring world universe to play in it. She is trying to force the issue to get him, get her to let them play in that universe. Yeah. And that's just kind of messed up if you think about it. it it's, it's kind of like going to any other notable writers that we know of uh, in the fantasy genre and telling them, well, you belong 
time, and because the demand for this universe is so great, well, you just need to hand that over to somebody else. You just gotta hand over the reins to another person who's gonna write. I read that as yeah, demand. It's, it's really, yeah, well, it's, it's really stupid. Fact. This is exactly the same shit that we're seeing in the geek universe overall. Social mm -hmm. justice comes in when something's popular, says we demand to control it, and that's exactly what this is. It's just a co-option of something that's popular so that they can take it, destroy it, and then walk away and go, oh, I guess it was crap to begin with. Yeah. Okay. And, the argu and the, argument, the argument that the woman presents is that because J.K. Rowling's other books that were non-fantasy based, did, because they didn't particularly do well, that she's incapable of writing in her own universe and therefore must hand it over to somebody else. That's not necessarily true. Some people who actually uh, who some people who write fantasy are better writing fantasy, and that's really the draw, the fact that the universe is, is magical and you have all these people interacting inside of it and they're just particularly good with world building but they may not be particularly good at writing people as well which is why it doesn't particularly work when you're doing something that is just about normal people well so I'm it's, going it's, to, it's not a particularly I'm, great argument I'm actually gonna do two things on this one you know some people are better writing tentacle porn um, <laughs> <laughs> other, other people. But I, I want to point this out. J.K. Rowling was a school teacher before this. If you notice, she's really good at writing the kids. Not so much the teachers, Some, maybe a little bit, but mm -hmm. mostly the kids. And that's where her forte yeah. really is, is writing not only an entertaining story for kids that, you know, it touches the child and all of us, but also writing about the kids. Yeah. And that, I think, is more of the popularity okay. of what has created Harry Potter, is that it touches the child in all of us. Yeah. And I think... Her, her this, but not like a Catholic priest. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I was going to... Don't you be wanting to see the green? But you're right. Yeah, and you're you're right though because her difficulties did come in when it came to writing uh, adults and writing those children maturing into teenagers, and that was a bit a bit difficult. She she has the same problem that a lot of writers do have when they're they're particularly good at at world building, but they're not necessarily as good at writing people or intimate relationships or things like that. I've noticed that as a pattern. Well, I, I, I think that moves us into the next one, which is uh, the Harry Potter play and okay. book eight. I think that's... I, I think it's a good reason why uh, she needed the extra help with the playwrights is to expand the, yeah. the, the story because... This new this play, which is going to become book eight, is actually based not only on uh, Harry and his his being his going from being this awesome hero to basically working a nine to five job at the Ministry of Magic. Yeah. And so he's got to deal with things in, as an adult, and then there's Albus, his son, who has to deal with his father's shadow. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things going on there, and there was a bit of controversy that erupted, because I think Rowling doesn't know when to shut up, because she, she said, like, oh, you know, Hermione could be black, but you very clearly wrote her as white. But there's And there's another controversy that has erupted through... Uh, the cursed child and uh, and all this other stuff going on with Pottermore as she expands the universe internationally uh, away from just being in Britain and being in France and uh, and parts of uh, parts of North America. Uh, yeah, basically they've expanded it to North America and as she started writing and integrating uh, the 
the already existing Harry Potter universe into North America with Native American culture, they felt it was insensitive, but I felt it was incredibly respectful from what I read. It was very, it was holding Native Americans in very high esteem and interweaving the already just into the historical fact of what was taking place at that time in American history. But social justice warriors were all pissed off. So it's, yeah. Well, the problem with, the biggest problem with social justice is anytime it goes against their narrative, which I, 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 I want to point this out to people, it's not about justice in any way, shape, or form. It's about basically lording it over everybody else. It is, it is an, the ultimate, I have the moral high ground because I'm protecting the weak. The problem with it is, is not all of these people are weak. In fact, if you have to go out and shut people down so you can protect them, the weak person is you. Social justice is a weak movement. It is based on weakness. It is based on their own weakness. And in order to feel powerful in any way, they have to force other people to be even weaker. They don't want to just bring you down to their level. They want to bring you down lower than them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is why they spend so much time attacking people who actually accomplish things. Well, it's ten times easier for them just to fucking just destroy. It takes effort to actually create. Which is why we love Minecraft so much. We get to create. We also get to destroy things while we're creating, but, you know, bonus. Yeah, well, I still want to destroy you, Neff. Ain't gonna happen! Just wait, my friend. <coughs> oh, boy. Don't worry, we'll just get some uh, destruction. Anal destruction! Yes, that means you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't see your ass. Uh, um, well, my... <laughs> Good. Don't Remember, ask. Rachel, Rachel, don't don't ask. ask. You don't want to know. There are certain things... That you she's waiting know. for a Mercedes, and she's getting prepared. She's preparing. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just are you preparing to take the strap the on? Just accidentally turned on. Why are you preparing no, no, the, the, the webcam too far just, away? The webcam just stopped for a second, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm here on my underwear. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Oh god, there are certain sights on this earth you do not want to see. <laughs> Uh, Mike might want to see know. it, but I don't want to see it. <laughs> if it comes oh, out, here's the thing. If that comes out, I'm getting a writing crop. What, are we talking about the fish? <laughs> no, no, no. Please, no, please. Okay, back on topic. Back on topic. Fishy, fishy, please. fishy. I'm pulling back on topic. I, <laughs> whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah, it's there's, like I'm fishing. I don't, wow. Uh, uh, there's no brakes on the anal train. Oh, God, no. Glub, well, glub. there are anal snails, but that's something hey, completely different. Hey, Nef, no, Nef, didn't you have another another surprise topic besides... Surprise, uh, topic besides uh, surprise, surprise, surprise. Are you ready for it? Tech.Mike has now got a new complaint. They are so weak. Siri, other voice agents have no idea how to respond to rape and domestic violence. Yes, they are now complaining that when you go to Siri and say, I think I'm suffering from depression, Siri doesn't know what to do. Because apparently their $500 phone doesn't know how to diagnose their problems and send them to someone. They're complaining. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What? I'm having trouble processing all this much stupid all at once. 
Um, so, wait a minute. Let me see if I get this straight. People have a problem with the fact that their phone can't diagnose their problems? Problems yes. that, that, you know, sometimes even medical professionals cannot diagnose accurately? Yes, yes. Now, That's around the, the, blues. the uh, article fully admits that when it comes to suicide, which ironically is the number one, uh, number one thing that men suffer from, uh, Siri and all of these uh, prob uh, programs like uh, Google Now and Cortana, they actually have an answer, which is, you know, uh, if you do it to Siri, it'll come up with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Uh, Google Now will do the same thing. Cortana doesn't actually do that, but it also has little things like uh, she says, like, but there's uh, so much life ahead of you or life is precious. Don't even think about hurting yourself. Well, but, she doesn't have an EMP wave to stop you. Sorry. Spoiler true. <laughs> Wrong Cortana. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, if you're talking about, but if you say I'm concerned about my mental health or I think I'm suffering from depression, suddenly they don't do anything. Gee, wow! Almost like you're asking a very vague question and you're not having a good response. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's about right. I, 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 it, it just seems like you know the the sensible thing. I'm feeling depressed. Yeah, you know, maybe you should maybe you should call a friend or a doctor. No, 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 no. You can't actually call someone. You have to talk to your machine. That's the way that it's like he's... you talk to your machine. Your machine will help you. So, so basically, these people want their machines to become basically more like people. To and then eventually, once once they are more like people, people are gonna get upset because they're too much like people, and therefore they need to have rights and. Okay, the stupid's okay, too high. On, I'm going to Minecraft on. and jumping from the top of a building. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out <laughs> all of the stupid here. Let's start off. They want they want their machines to be more like people. You know, I I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't mind sitting here having a two hour conversation with my computer. I would love to be able to do that with Cortana. I, I I'm I'm fully. Is your voice really that nice, that. Jim? You know, that would be fun for me, <laughs> just mainly because it would it would be a, so, an amusement. But so basically, it would be, you want to have cyber sex, but wait, you want to have phone <laughs> sex with Cortana. Cortana. <laughs> sure. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Moving on back to what I was saying, I would love to do that because I think <laughs> it would be an amusing thing to just have a two-hour conversation with with my computer. Having said that. After that conversation, I would go out. I would have interactions with normal people because I enjoy that too. The thing with it is, is what I see based upon the patterns of people is that a lot of these people don't want them so much to be um, the computer the computer to be more like people. They want the computer to tell them what to do. They want the computer to run their lives for them. We have entered the world of paranoia. The no, we've entered the world of the of the Matrix. People want the Matrix. Well, oh, God no. So, no. So, no. so basically, they Let want they Let want a parent. Because their parents, but because their parents have have failed to be parents, they want the they want their machines to basically be parents and and baby them and take care of them and do all the things for them. I guess. I mean, it sure seems to be this way. It's the most and, depressing life ever. Yes, yes, and that's that's why it, it's it, it's scary that this is the world that that we live in. That people don't want to take responsibility. I honestly believe you know you need to take yeah. responsibility for yourself, which is why I I I have such a problem with Bernie Sanders because he's promising people I'm going to take care of you. This is the lure of the dark side, people. Recognize it. When people say, I'm going to take care of you, what is going to end up happening is some form of 
the Matrix. You belong to them. You are not free. Right. You, yeah, you yeah. are not free. They're going to take care of you like the mafioso is going to take care of you. No, Here an offer you can't refuse because we're no. going to shoot you otherwise. No, it's more of, and I, I people are going to get in, are going to get insulted by this, but it's slavery. Yes, it is. And you're the ones that are that are perpetuating it. You're enslaving yourself to someone else. <sighs> someone, please go ahead. I don't like selling. I don't sell my life that cheaply. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm worth at oh, least... Oh, you sell uh, your life that. for a date with Mike's sister. <laughs> well, he already had oh, that. you didn't know, realize that that we, we already had that, didn't you? Yeah, Mike told me. I, I figured I'd, I'd make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, the truth be told, I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Yeah, yes. Exactly. And that's the truth. That's that's the reality. Of... That's the biggest thing. Is you will never experience life if you have to be on your knees. Well, maybe for one thing, for women. But well, you know, it, Rachel. You know what? No, if, no, no. if Mercedes were to pop in here, I wouldn't have a problem with getting on my knees for her. <laughs> oh, my eyes. But the thing with it is, is so it, it has to be mutual. She she also has to get on her knees for me. Uh, I believe that position, yeah. I believe that position is called the tree. Um, <laughs> Whatever, I I don't care what it's called. Just so long as so long as we're having fun and enjoying ourselves, I don't give a fuck. The 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 future that's being offered is neither fun nor enjoyable. No. Ah. <sighs> So what else do we have? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do believe something rather amusing has happened recently. Uh, Henry Cavill, the, the guy who's currently portraying Superman. Yeah, laugh, 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 laugh. Yeah. Laugh. Fun. Yeah, uh, is getting upset about the fact that women are sexually harassing him in front of his girlfriend. <laughs> Really? Okay, that's actually a good one. Oh, 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 oh it, gets, it gets better. It gets better. He doesn't so much have a problem with the fact that they're sexually harassing him. He does have a problem with the double standard about how women are sitting there getting upset about at, you know, men sexually harassing them. But, the, you know, if he were the one to sit there and say, hey, you fancy, you want to go fuck, they, they'd be dropping their panties in a heartbeat. No, his problem is that they're doing it in front of his girlfriend. Which, when I saw a picture of her, I was like, "Dude, you you could do a hell of a lot better. Get ditch this bitch." Unless she sucks really well. Think about that. Could be something. I don't else. Wanna, you know what? Mercedes probably yeah, sucks really well, but you know, yeah. you know if, if personality, if Rachel, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I, if you look at the picture of his girlfriend, I think it's Tara King, uh, in the BBC article that's linked, she's got this look of, look at me, I've got, I've got the hottest guy, and blah, 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 and it's like, you can just see this bitch. Oh, yeah, the smug superiority there? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, it, it, I can definitely see it there, uh, but they, they're Ken and fucking Barbie. So everyone's jealous of her because she's in Barbie's position. Uh, I'm having technical difficulties. Please continue. Well, that's probably the thing. Like most women, when it's like I, I, I don't even care to acknowledge it because it's like. So she's 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 happy she's clinging on to a guy that's way beyond her. Like those relationships don't last that long. They just crash and burn because someone's gonna fucking be a cunt at the wrong time. It's gonna be like fuck this shit. Yeah, when you look at the people whose marriages last lasted quite a long time in Hollywood, uh, Danny DeVito and Rio Perlman, uh, DeForest Kelly and his wife. 
the guy who played Dr. McCoy. They, they kept it pretty low-key. They're not obvious about it, but they were able to interact with their fans. Well, th not just that. I mean, I I'll go to country music. You have uh, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill who have been together for ever. It's like the 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 relationships that last are are the ones where you know it really is about each other this one at some point i hope henry wakes up and realizes he it, it's not it's not a healthy relationship for him and we have a wild mercedes Oh, what? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, I'm sorry. Let me get the suit and tie on. <laughs> Let's sort out. Um. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, Mercedes has finally joined us, so we're going to suspend operations to, just long enough to let her talk about her South by Southwest experience. <laughs> Thank you I for try. joining us, Mercedes. It's it's lovely to have you. Well, well, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. Can you guys hear me? All right. Yes, we can. Yes. Cool. cool, yeah. Um, I appreciate you letting me come on and talk about the clusterfuck that is South by Southwest. You, <laughs> you, I, I've been telling you for a while, you are always welcome here, Mercedes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm usually hard to catch, but I'm, I'm glad you guys invited me, so thank you. Oh, well, we did have to get the abduction beam out. <laughs> Please forgive the alien here. <laughs> oh, she knows Neff and Nora. She, she probably knows Neff better than okay. she knows me. I, I, I do know Neff pretty well. Well, we well after that. all, I am her uh, 3D creator. <laughs> exactly. Oh. <laughs> all right. Don't look at me. I'm just a rabbit with a dragon on my six. Um. <laughs> this is fun. I'm sorry. I'm a little slow on the uptake this morning. I haven't been feeling well all week, so... Yeah. Uh. That's fine. Take your time and and just let us know what happened and have and have fun. Well, That's okay. So, well, what really? I mean, the 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 basis of it. And, you know, I put a YouTube video up before I flew out to Austin that kind of explained a good portion of the backstory, which was that the Open Gaming Society had hit me up sometime almost a year ago, saying, "Hey, you want to do this panel?" And I thought, sure. You know. I, to me, panels aren't a big deal. I do a lot of um, adult industry ones, and I thought, oh, I got some friends in Austin. That'd be fun. Well, anyway, it turned into this whole issue. And if you guys remember, in October of last year, it was a big problem because um, Randy Harper threw a hissy fit that a quote unquote Gamergate panel was going to be there, and that she had it canceled, and then her panel was canceled, and then um, she somehow manipulated the uh, South by Southwest director into giving her an all-day summit on harassment. And they wanted to put our panel during that all-day summit. And I said, that's fine. And then Randy Harper threw a hissy fit about that. And then they started calling me in particular a harasser and an abuser and a killer and a bunch of other things. And um, when I countered that, she, again went to the big patriarch of the South by Southwest event and complained to Daddy that I was being a mean harasser. I mean, they, they called me a killer. It's, it's ridiculous. So, okay, uh, I want to hear that just... I would love to hear that justified. How do they justify Mercedes being a killer? That... I mean, that, that Somebody please explain that. Well, well her I, body is killer, but that's about it. it well, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well it, I, I kill all the semen. I kill all the potential for all the children all the time. <laughs> all right. so, My God. Genocide. <laughs> I'm There's nothing wrong with swallowing once in a while, people. Please. <laughs> oh, so at that time, I, so the other, the other part of this is that Nick Robolek, who was supposed to be on the panel, Randy Harper wanted him removed. And so I drew the line at that. I said, no. And so he really wanted me there, the guy who's the director, because he thought that I would be a draw, right? So, you, you know, and this is why I got pissed off at Hugh, because he can't have it both ways, and he's a fucking pussy, so fuck him. But uh, at the time, Harper wanted uh, Nick Robolek kicked off, and I said, nope, like, you guys kick Nick off, then I'm not coming either. 
So Hugh had conceded, but that was back in October. And they're like, you can't, you know, Hugh had requested. Now, keep in mind, Hugh's a total pussy. So Hugh has not once been willing to call me directly. He does all his communication through Perry, like a pussy. So uh, if you read the article about it, that's why eventually he had sent an email. Uh, go forward in time. We'll go forward in time. He, he, um, he asked me to not talk. He actually said, you know, no talking about Harper. I waited till after Harper's panel was done, which was last weekend. So on Monday, I was gloating that nobody showed up because nobody fucking cares about her because she's a fucking cunt. And nobody wants to sit at an all-day panel about online harassment. So I made a couple comments on Monday about it, and I made a video just basically telling people. Because the other thing is they waited until, like, last week to tell us about the placement of the panel. And I get this in. I'm already committed to it. And they have us at 3.30 p.m. at an off-site hotel across the river from most of the South by Southwest conference. And, at a, and we're the only conference at that hotel that day. I was I was just gonna say that was the kiss of death. Your panel just died. Well, it, it died because Harper set it up to die. They put us in the same location as the All Day Summit. Now Harper was trying to say, oh, the location was bad and that's why it failed. No, she had an All Day Summit. I mean, if you gave me All Day on a Saturday to do a summit, I would pack the thing because it's an All Day thing and it's on a Saturday. People are off. But, but Mercedes. They, Mercedes. Yeah. They could put you anywhere, and you should be able to pack the thing. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they, but that's why, that's why I was pissed, and that's why on one day I did the video before going out there because I saw this and I thought nobody's going to show up for this. Like people will show up to hang out with me, and people did later that evening when they got off work, but they're not going to show up at 3:30 on a Tuesday because people work, and, and and this was not we were not going to get any foot traffic, and so they set the panel up for failure. South by Southwest set us up for failure. And, and that pissed me off for a variety of reasons. And they're wasting my time. And they're wasting the other panelists' time. And then, you know, Harper... Like, there's no reason that Harper should have had such a dismal turnout. It was on a fucking Saturday, and she had all day. So, so her turnout is the direct result of her being shitty. But putting us 3.30 on a Tuesday in an off-site location, and we're the only panel that day at, at that location, which is 15 to 20 minutes by Uber away from the rest of the... Uh, event. I mean, that's, you know, it's really, it's very unfair. So that's why I, I spoke about it in the video. I made this video on Monday. Perry calls me in a panic because Hugh called him going, ha Mercedes needs to take the video down. And I'm going, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, this Hugh guy is really pissing me off at this point, right? And I'm like, fine. To make Perry happy, I'll take the video down for a couple days, but fuck you, it's going to go back up, right? <laughs> so, so I fly to Austin. I get off flight 12.30 a.m. on Tuesday and I get a call from Perry. Well, Hugh's very unhappy. Well, I'm very fucking unhappy too, but Hugh's very unhappy. He wants these tweets censored. And, and, and I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Send me the list. So he sends me this list and I'm like, yeah, you can go fuck yourself. And then that's why I just published all of it because Hugh can go fuck himself. And he still hasn't responded because he's a wuss, but I have the best legal team in the world, so he's going to get a letter to demand for payment of my expenses here shortly. So, um, uh, I I don't really have a whole lot of patience for this. Uh, South by is a shit conference, from what I can tell while I was there. It's not, it, you can't, and, and this is, this is the, the mistake I made was that I committed to it so that Gamergate would have, if I hadn't committed to the panel, it wouldn't have happened, by the way. And if I hadn't drawn a line, then Nick Roblick was going to be kicked off, by the way. And then people are pissed at me and Gamergate for going, you know what, fuck you, I'm not going to be censored. You all can fuck yourselves a day before the panel. And I'm saying, hey, look, I, there wouldn't have been one. And Hugh got his panties in a fucking twist, but I'm the only reason that he was going to allow the thing to happen at all. So... It's just a, it's it's a clusterfuck. You can't deal with these these SJW types. There's no there's no real reasonable way to deal with them. No, there really isn't. Uh, Mercedes, uh, if you if you can shoot me that a link to that uh, video. Hopefully, it's back up again. Oh yeah, uh, put I'll it, put that in the notes. I, I put it back up before the conference. After he told me to uh, delete the tweets, I made it live again. 
Yeah, I want to put that in the in the uh, show description so people can watch that. Yeah, I mean it's basically it's a ten minute video just telling everyone of what happened. Yeah. It's just me telling the story that I just told you it, without the the follow up on how that how it went down at the conference, you know. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, I I, I hate to say it, but you know it sounds like Harper is shit. Honestly, mm -hmm. you give somebody an all-day panel, you should at least have, especially on a Saturday, you should, I don't care where this thing is, an all-day panel at Comic-Con will, will be packed house on a Saturday. Right, right. exactly. Uh, any kind of all-day panel should have at least some people there, even if it is off-site on a Saturday. Right. You put Putting somebody in a panel at 3.30, this is just before people get off work on a Tuesday? No. Nobody's going to be there. No, no, and, it's, it, and there's no walk and this is, this is my issue with this. And Harper, most of the tweets that I was being requested to delete were clearly coming from Harper herself. It was a direct, uh, it was a direct email from, he, from Hugh, but I don't think he'd sat there and parsed through every single tweet I made over the last 24 hours, so I'm sure it was Harper. And a lot of it was just stuff where I was telling the truth. See, South by didn't like the fact that I was exposing how much Harper had them wrapped around their finger. And that's why Hugh's panties were in a twist. And so that's why I'm publicly saying it as much as possible right now. Because uh, they don't want me to say it, so that's why I'm saying it. Yeah. And anytime somebody says, I don't want you to say this... And I've had a few people sit there and say, tell me I can't say things. The first thing I do is say, you know what, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it more now. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's how I felt. And and especially because, you know, South by they weren't paying me to be there. It's not like I had like a, a legal contract with them binding what I could say. Um, you know, I, I flew out there on my own dime. That was great. I got to see my buddy Joe Biggs. I got to see my, my friend Dr. Chantel. And I got to see a bunch of really great people from the Gamergate camp. So, you know what? It was all, it, it was fine. But it cost me money and time that I didn't need to spend. And uh, I don't, I certainly don't owe Hugh at South by Southwest or anything. And, and to be honest, people need to know that this is how they run the shit. Because the way he was talking to me, it's like, it's like I'm some sort of corporate employee that needs to mind my p's and q's. I'm like, fuck you, man. You don't own me. That's not how this is working here. So let me recommend something to you. You can get your head out of your fucking ass. And by the way, let, here, let me publish the uh, email so that people know I'm not just bullshitting. I have proof here. Here's the tangible proof I have. Emails from him showing exactly what happened. This isn't me saying, oh, they, they said I need to be censored. No, no, I got the email here of exactly what they want me to censor. That's how petty these fucking people are. Well, I'm, I'm going to sit there and point out, you know, sometimes we, we hear Tales from the Infrared. We, we keep the geek, we keep it mainly geek stuff, but this SJW stuff is all over the place. Yeah. And it, stem, it, it stems from wanting to control what people think. And how they th how they think is actually I think the more accurate way of, of looking at things. Yep. You can't do that, not in a, and not and still have a free society. Mm -mm. No, well, and, and the funny thing to me about the whole thing is like like here's like Hugh trying to control what I say on Twitter. Well, it big it blew up in his face because see they they the it only works with them if everybody's willing to play the game. And then as soon as people are willing to say, well, no, I'm going to expose this, then they have a problem on their hands. The, the biggest issue is that we have a whole generation of kids that were raised by teachers that, that held this belief system up as being quote-unquote humane. So all these, these kids that I meet, like, like under the age of 25 these days, have it that self-censorship is somehow the, the humane thing to do. So this is why it's a real problem right now. Well, I, I want to point something out. Which What is more humane? Sitting there and self-censoring, as people say. I, I've got a guy at work who tells me I need to censor more. I'm like, <laughs> right. 
but uh, you know what is more humane? You know, basically self-censoring and lying to somebody in the in the essence of sparing their feelings or telling them the honest truth and maybe f fixing a problem that you know in a company could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars and possibly even the company itself. They can't yeah. handle the truth. Right, but but, see, but they're not thinking like this. I mean, they were raised with this kind of like. And again, if people don't realize, it's just corporate mentality. Like the reason South by adheres to it so easily is that the corporate mentality is offend the least amount of people possible, so you have the the greatest audience. But well, the mistake, but they, but the problem is that at this point, the only people that they're attracting are the mediocre, because because they're only attracting people who either allow themselves to be censored or who adhere with that ideology. True. But uh, I remember you tweeting a lot for the uh, Are You Beachbody Revy, the protein world. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was f fucking phenomenal. But I if you look at it, they sat there and they were saying, fuck you, to all the people say saying, you should, this is offensive. And they made, what, a billion or a million pounds? Yeah, yeah, but see, and they're and they're a fitness company, so they can do that. It's just like if you're a porn star, you can do that, you know, because because they're, I mean, fitness by its very essence is you're improving yourself, which is not a politically correct thing to do. It's not politically correct to say, hey, I'm gonna go work out and get this fat off my body. You know what I mean? Like it's like th there's no uh, equality of outcome there, and so. As a fitness company, yeah, you know what? They they can tell them to go fuck themselves. And it's the same thing with being a porn star. And like they can say to me, "You're being, uh, you know, you're being offensive," and I'm like, "Good." This yeah. is what I do for a living, you know. Well, <laughs> I, I think work. that's I think that's part of the problem is we're we're starting to equate offensive as being something bad. Sometimes, literally, you have to offend people. Yeah, because the truth the truth is offensive. Yeah. Truth shouldn't be offensive; it just should be. Oh. people choose to be offended because they don't like. You know what it really is? Is people don't like to be wrong, or they don't like to have their belief shattered, and so they experience it as offensive when you're telling them something that they didn't know before. They don't want to accept as true. But th this whole thing by South by was a total fucking waste because Hugh's an idiot because if he was smart he would have said yeah you know what Randy your thing's over it happened Saturday I can't control what this woman says on her personal timeline just don't look at it because that's see that's the appropriate thing to do it's like it's like these people didn't go to kindergarten or something I mean it's the equivalent of a five-year-old saying that that other you know five-year-old hurt their feelings and you say well sticks and stones may break your bones but words don't hurt you. These are lessons you should learn as a kid. But the mistake that's being made is these idiots like Hugh Forrest, if you want to look them up, Hugh Forrest, South by Southwest, they run it like it's like they're these grand patriarchs of, of kindergarten. So he's going to make me modify my behavior to make this girl who hasn't grown up happy. And all that happens is that I expose on a bunch of the conservative media what a fucking pussy he is. I wish you could have been here for the whole show because you just basically said the same thing we've been saying about woo and uh, and SJWs and a couple of points in this show so far. Well, and, and you know what's interesting is actually, and I haven't talked about this on Twitter because it's not that important and I don't really talk about it, but Brianna Wu actually emailed me. And she emailed me after this whole event to clarify to me two things the three things. The first one was that she had nothing to do with the South by issue that I was having. She had nothing to do with wanting me out of there. And she didn't. She actually didn't tweet anything about me or to me or anything like that. And I saw that her and Harper were fighting about it too. I mean Harper's a fucking basket case. So this is the this is the thing where the SJWs cannibalized their own. I think Wu didn't want me to start in on her. And she was pleasant enough and I actually haven't I haven't really had any interaction with her because these people blocked me. You know, so so she said that she made some point about how she's not a sex negative feminist and something about how politically she's not telling me who to vote for. I, you know, I don't. Again, I don't have interaction. I told her, hey, if you unblock me, you'll see I don't really talk about you anyway. So, uh, fine. I mean, 
no problem. I appreciate the email. Thanks for that. I actually never thought we had anything to do with it because all I've heard consistently from the organizer of the panel is Hugh says that Randy needs blah blah blah. Yeah. So and I I knew who it was. It wasn't it wasn't Wu. Yeah, but I I think that's the that's the thing is Wu was covering her ass and. She, yeah. she 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 can tell who the alpha dog is in, in that in, around here and it's definitely not Harper oh fuck no well this is this, this is the issue that I had I was not going to be censored by some inferior fucking pathetic blue meth whale bitch like who the fuck does she think she is Oh, meth whale? I actually like that phrase. I think I will use it now. Yeah. Oh, I, I just can't imagine Harper. whales on meth. I mean, I can't see that. We always call them land whales. Well, I'm going to be that cacactic. <laughs> now, now it's time for a true Scotty quote. Admiral, there will be whales here, and they weigh a ton. <laughs> Oh but that's, but that's, this is so, that's part of the reason you know Harper was upset because I called her a blue meth whale in my video that I'll send you. But uh, you know the the thing about it is yeah, and and Wu's covering her ass, but I think Wu also had a lot of run-ins with Harper. So you know in that duo, Wu's the sane one, right? And and I think that's that they didn't really not want saying to much. Her. I, I didn't say it was saying much. <laughs> it's all it's all very relative. And hell, you know, I'm I'm crazy as fuck too, but but I'm not irrational. And my my issue with this was I was not gonna have somebody who's inferior to me telling me what I can and cannot say. Whether it's Hugh Forrest, whether it's Randy Harper, these people don't get to tell me what to fucking say. I don't respect them. You know, if it's like it's like if, if General Mad Dog Mattis Came to me and said, Mercedes. Oh, Mad Dog. Yes, you know, Mad Dog. But, but Mad Dog Mattis came to me and said, You know, Mercedes, I got a problem with some of the things you're saying. And here's where they're wrong. I might fucking listen to the guy because I respect the fuck out of that guy. But Randy Harper and Hugh Forrest, the fucking eunuch of South by Southwest, those, those two fuckers don't get to tell me what to say. Well, I, I'll put it to you this way uh, if somebody sits there and tells me that they got a problem with what I have to say, I'll listen to them. Right. I will sit there and annihilate everything they have to say right afterwards, but I'll listen to them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if they, if they sit there and they show that they don't have a leg to stand on when I'm done annihilating what they have to say, that's where they lose, their res that's where they lose respect. And exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's and, and and that's where, you know, I think I'm fairly reasonable too. Like he, he was upset about the video. All right, fine. Fine, Perry, I'll take it down, you know, for a couple of days. Doesn't mean it's not going back up, but I'll take it down. But when it comes to, to telling me to go through my fucking Twitter timeline and delete tweets that literally just exposed South by Southwest's ineptitude and their pandering, no, you can go to fucking hell. I won't show up. Yeah, and that's, I think that's more of what it is, is you just basically showed them for the uh, social justice mouthpiece that they they were being. Yeah. And they didn't like it. Well, if you don't like it, don't be it. Right, right, right. And don't be stupid enough to send me emails that say things like tweets that need to go away. Oh, they need to go away? How about I uh, instead publish them? How about that? How about how about you have all your friends sit there and go? Oh well, you know it needs to go away. Retweet, retweet, favorite. Oh, right. It's and the problem with it is that like South by shouldn't have should be a neutral platform. I mean, you know, come on, they had the president there. Like it's pretty clear they've got political affiliation. You know, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like 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 it's a fucking SJW utopia, and so is Austin anyway. But. Um, but see, I don't, I don't do that. Like that's not a thing that I do. And I was just grateful that I wasn't going to be there on the day Obama was, because I thought what a fucking nightmare. Every time Obama's in L.A., it just fucks up the traffic so bad. It's not. Uh, People are like, oh, the president. Uh, I hear you, sister. I'm like all, like all I could think about is fucking hell. Which politicians in town today? God damn it, it's going to take me like two hours to get across the city. I lived in the national capital area for a while. Trust me, the cluster doesn't end there. 
<laughs> oh, isn't it exciting? Isn't it exciting to think about all of the overpaid douchebags that are driving around fucking up your traffic flow? I would rather have my e teeth extracted through my ears. <laughs> Me too. That's a good one. I'm going to steal that. Go right ahead. <laughs> so I'm sorry I we subverted all the good geeky talk with this nonsense about South by. It's just oh no, no, oh, no, 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 no. We'll get back to geeky talk real quick here. If, if, if you want to join in on the next topic, you, you are more than welcome. We, you can you can sit here, talk geek, and uh, and laugh at SJWs as much as you want. I, I think I'm actually going to enjoy you guys offline. I feel just like shit, but I didn't want to to bail on you guys, so I wanted to make sure to come on and, and say hey, hi. It gives, us some, it, gives us, it gives us more reason to even to have more more despicableness I about what the, he's trying to say. Is it gives and then, more and reason then, to do a good job and make <laughs> you laugh. The question is, is it the con funk? Oh. <laughs> I actually have been pretty immune to the confront. I rely on Baraka, vitamin C, and trying to eat during the during the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, you sound horrible, love. I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna log off. Thank you for letting me. I'm gonna come back on when uh, I'm not sick and we can talk eek. That, that sounds good to me. All well, right. Thanks, okay. thanks, guys. Have a good Saturday. Rest up. Hey, have, have, have a good one. Yep. Bye, guys. All right, and Mercedes is out. If you can't tell, some of us actually like Mercedes. She's one of us. Yeah. She's also a lot of fun. All right, so what else do we have, people? I don't know. What happened to the... Uh... Own ten more, uh, 10 or more games on Steam. You're too hardcore for developers. <laughs> well, oh uh... Uh, c considering I barely had much of my, in my Steam collection, I'm apparently too hardcore for them even now. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna point something out. I have a PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three, Xbox, Xbox Three Sixty, Xbox <laughs> One, um, the GameCube. I had the old Nintendo. I still have more Nintendo games than they ha than that. Well, they were cheaper back then too. Well, regardless, the whole point of it is, is you know, I still uh, my Nintendo system doesn't even work anymore. I still have more Nintendo ga more than ten Nintendo mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Hey, you're looking for a guy who has an television. Yeah, still and I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure you have more. Uh, more functional uh, games than than that, but the whole point of it is, it, the, these people aren't the core audience. The problem with that is, is these people, the people who are the are spending that kind of money, are not only your core audience; they're the ones keeping you going. We're keeping the lights on. Well, I know why they don't time. want people with ten or more games is that they have enough t uh, taste to go if they go into different games. Know if the game is going actually to shit or not, and calling them on their bullshit. Well, I don't think it's just that. I think it's also the fact that uh, it, it, if you go back to uh, the gamers are dead articles from mm -hmm. the beginning of Gamergate, it's almost the exact same thing. It's that exact. It's almost the exact same argument. It's saying, you know, these people are not the uh, are not the people you need to be working on, and to a certain degree, I can understand their point. You know, we're going to keep buying the games. We're going to keep the the industry going. What they're saying is they want to get more people in. The problem with it is, is how do you get more people in? You make something interesting. The people who keep saying that. The the core is not their their uh, uh, they're not the core is not not who they're going for are the ones who are trying to go after people who are maybe gonna get a game play it for a little while it's a mobile game and then they're gonna delete it go, move on to the next one in a couple of weeks it's like you pay they they maybe pay three bucks for the game. Play it for a little while and then move on. 
you're not going to get any of the free, the freemium stuff that you do. You're not going to get the extra money out of them. These people aren't even going to keep the, pay your power bill, let alone your employees. Well, most of these uh, little shit companies only have one employee. Yeah, and they're going to be starving as usual. No, nah, they'll just go to Patreon. <laughs> woo? Woo? Has anybody seen Woo? Woo, woo! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, but that's the thing. Is, 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 it's, I'm not making enough do, doing this. Well, maybe it's because your games are shit. You ever think of that? It's 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 I, I don't know. That's that's just my thought. Anybody else? Anything there's, else? There's well, really not more. much to talk about that bullshit because I mean, quite literally, I can guarantee you anyone that who really plays games, <laughs> motherfucker. You were just having the worst luck today, buddy. Well, one thing I was just thinking is. Uh, this actually relates to one of our other topics, which we can now segue into. The whole uh, freemium games that we've got going on, uh, especially with that one from uh, the Miyamoto. And I was actually reading the article on this. And what it is, is it's got these, this in-game currency that you can use to buy stuff and get things, or play games like Pachinko and stuff like that. And what they're doing is they're selling the coins. And while that itself is not wrong, I know what their plan is. They're hoping they're going to get people who are just bored and will end up buying shit tons of those coins for no reason. Well, I, I think it's a little bit more than that. I think um, you said it's Pachenko and stuff like that. I, I, I wonder if maybe they're trying to uh, cash in on gambling addiction and stuff like that. Well, Entirely it's possible. It's possible. I, but they're I, I, also holding on to money that the gamblers would have spent el spent gambling. Uh, Japanese in Japan, it's actually illegal to gamble for money, so that's why they gamble for the beads and pachinko, so they can trade it in for items after when they're when they collect their winnings. Well, that's and then of course go next door to uh, the uh, yakuza run place and chain exchange those items for actual cash. Right. Exactly. But if you if you think about it also, um, oh, I had a thought. Uh, they're, they're, they're playing on the gambling thing, and, you know, that's going to make them a lot of money, really, honestly. But what, uh, how are they going to get these gamblers in there? But also, at the same time, if you go back to an old episode of Big Bang Theory when it was actually good... And Penny playing uh, what looked like Age of Conan. Yeah, that was Age of Conan. Yeah, I remember that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that people who will get sucked into stuff like this and continue to play. It's a manipulation to to do that. It's sad. Yeah, oh. such is such is true. We're, I, it looks like you know people don't want to continue on. We still ha we still have a little bit of time, but and we have one more topic. But I think we're all kind of. Uh, I think um, I think Mercedes left us all spent. Uh, uh yeah, we gotta go to uh, smoke a cigarette. Yeah, well, I've been vaping the whole time, so I'm good. I may need a hit. <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to talk about the PlayStation thing, though. I will say, you know, a grand for the full system, way out of not worth it for me. Something like the 3DO or something like that in the day. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it just seems like it's it's way overpriced for what you're getting, and not worth it. But my opinion, anyway. Final thoughts for those people who are still around. We'll start off with Usagi. Ah. Uh. Where did we? Where did they go? <laughs> Jeez, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still in the fog. I still need to get that cigarette to focus. Mercedes, look at what you did to my panel. 
and they'll and they'll kill me if they if I don't tell you you are welcome back anytime you want. <laughs> okay, so Mike, don't forget to shell. What are your final thoughts? Final thoughts of actually just quite literally keep on gaming, enjoy your gaming, don't let it ha- hold you back. If someone says you're not a gamer and you're deeply in love with, with it, tell them the fuck all right off and uh Check out Red Pill Gamers. We're going to do a silly little thing shortly and have that up hopefully ASAP on Minecraft. All right. Nefinor, don't forget to shell because I know you have to shell for Mercedes. I do? Uh, Devil's Contract. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mercedes is in the Devil's Contract, uh, my uh, online comic, which is on a little bit of hiatus as I migrate uh, stuff to my new computer. But uh, devilscontract.com, Mercedes, the 3D succubus, uh, even though she's a real-life succubus anyway. Look, she just drained three life levels out of us. <laughs> uh, she she uh, drained you, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, she drained you guys. I'm still ready ready to go. In fact, I'll, I'll be happy to go meet her if she wants. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, but you don't want to get uh, infected with Confunk. That's true. That's the only thing that... That would stop me. Uh, my thoughts, please, people. These uh, these people who are pushing the SJW narrative do not have anybody's best interests in mind except for their own. I don't think they can understand having someone else's best interests in mind. Um, not I can't really say I do either beyond what just say. And this is how I live my life. Uh, you know, enjoy your weekend. Have some fun. Have some fun, and take the red pill. <laughs>